I'm going to give y'all a break from cussing y'all out or talking to y'all any kind of way about the tea. But real talk, get into this CMOS. Y'all know I've been on a health and wellness journey as of the last year and a half, two years. And CMOS is one of the things that I've added to my routine. You can drop it in your tea. You can eat it raw. You can drop it in your juice. But it is really good for your health, for your skin, for your overall well-being. Drop down in the description box. Click the link to purchase this product. Try it for yourself. I'm telling you, it really will change the way you look and feel. Nelson, so girl, when I tell you I've been trying to get through these Married to Medicine review all doggone day, I got home from the gym at 1230. And when I tell you my phone been ringing off the hook, it literally has taken me four hours to watch one episode of these damn Medicine Wise. But baby, I don't watched it. And we got a whole lot of things to say about the old shot. About Contessa getting into it with Heavenly and how Damon had done got that ass together in that truck. Want to talk about it? Here it go. Girl, I hate that I even have to go through this whole review because the most interesting part was the dynamic between Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Damon, and Contessa down in Simone House. But we're going to do things in order and decency as the Bible says. We're going to start from the rooter and end to the tutor. Or in this case, end at the old shot down to Dr. Jackie. Let me tell you something. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Jackie, what? Jackie got it. Jackie do IVs. Jackie do Botox. Jackie do fertility. Jackie do skincare. Jackie do um, um, old shots in the vagina. Is that child? Jackie gonna start doing hair in a minute and have a food truck selling vegan dinners in a heartbeat. I keep on. Dr. Jackie, we see you. She got a whole dog on center over there where they do full. Full service coochie center. Yes, God. Drive through and get your coochie clean, waxed, washed, and injected with your own platelets. We see you, Dr. Jackie. Coochie coupon ain't no expiration date. That's for all my old school comic view hoes. You got to be an old 90s hoe to know about coochie coupon ain't no expiration date. I want to see in the comments how many of y'all actually remember that coochie coupon joke from comic view. You got to be an old 90s hoe to know about that. Anywho, the episode opens up with Anila, old helpless ass, got her parents moving in, and Karen said he gonna put down some rules for the parents. I definitely agree. Well, listen, let me back up. I know what will fly in my household, but I also, as I've gotten older, I've learned to become more culturally aware and culturally sensitive to other people's cultures. And in their culture, maybe your, your parents come in and be all in your business and run all through your house. Where I come from, honey, that shit don't work, <laughs> okay? Your parents get put out. They get put the hell out, and they come, like, ooh, child. <laughs> I'm about to tell all my friends' business. I had a friend one time. They had just moved into a new house, and her mother-in-law came and cooked in her kitchen first, and, baby, she had an attitude with that lady for two years because she was mad. And I was just like, girl, what's the big deal? The lady was cooking for y'all, and she was just like, no, but don't nobody need to be cooking in my kitchen first. I need to be the first person to cook in my kitchen. See, that's the type of petty shit go down in black households or whatever. So, yes, there will be Ten Commandments in my house. And the, the first one would be if you don't sit your ass down and watch TV and ask me to do any and everything in there except use the bathroom, your ass got to go. At any rate, Karen and Anila, if anything they bring to the show, it's some comic relief and because God knows anything outside of that their storyline is kind of boring. So, that was funny. Um, Toya then talks to her son about the Xbox card. And, um, is it me or did it sound as if Toya's son was probably around a bunch of white people kids' house? That's what it sounded like to me because they went on this whole thing about, you know, when you're a black boy or a black kid, there are ramifications for things. That's why I always tell people, you know, we in the black community, we do this thing. And I'll never forget my cousin one time. She was like, yeah, you know, my daughter's so smart and she in this grade and she the only black girl in the class. 
And I looked at her with disgust on my face, and I said, don't you ever say that again. I said, you walk around like that's a badge of honor. And she didn't get it. I was like, you walk around like that's a badge of honor. You've thrown, you've thrust your daughter in an environment where she's the only person that looks like her. They all got one thing in common, skin color. And you think because she stands out amongst them that somehow she's elite. And it's it's funny. That's just, you know, one of the vestiges of slavery and Jim Crow and so on and so forth. But y'all have heard me say this over the years. Stop taking y'all beautiful black children and throwing them in all white environments and expecting them to thrive, okay? It gives them identity crises. It gives them all types of issues socially that they, that they have to deal with prematurely that they would not have to deal with if they were placed in more multicultural environments or environments where kids look like them. White don't automatically equal better and it damn sure don't equal safe. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people think, oh, I'm sending my kids to the good white school because the education is better. Okay, they might be getting a little, they might be getting a, 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 a better textbook here, but they're getting fucked up psychologically over here. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta, you gotta weigh the weigh, you have got to weigh the pros and cons when you putting your children in certain environments. And black people, we have got to get away from this white is right. Oh, if I'm in a white environment, somehow I'm in a better, more upper echelon environment because you see what happened. He took his black ass over there and them kids showed his ass. He was still just what? Just a nigga who stole the Xbox card. Out of all the kids in there, your son the one who stole the Xbox card. Like my mama would say if she was still alive, keep your ass from riding there. Stay home. I told you not to carry your ass riding there. No way. Stay home. He need to stay his ass home. Uh... Heavenly comes to Jackie and Jackie starts talking about the old shot. And then Heavenly shows Jackie the pamphlet about her mother having to go into hospice care. You know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because um, I've had to do that three times. My grand, my grandmother, my mother, then my father. Um, it's not a fun subject to broach. Anybody who's gone through that, you know, at the point in which they give you the brochure and they use the word hospice, that means the person is dying and they're dying relatively soon. Like you don't be sitting up in hospice for for six and nine months. You know what I'm saying? My mother went to hospice. I got the call. They sent your mother to hospice. My mother died three days later. My dad was in hospice for uh, maybe a week, a week and a half, and then he died. Hospice and dealing with hospice is not fun um, whatsoever. So I definitely get what Heavenly is going through with having to deal with that and anybody who's lost a parent that way. Um, Anila's parents show up and start laughing at them damn rules of that house. Anila's parents are funny. And I am so glad that we are moving away from the Mama Joyce and the Mama D characters. Nothing against them. Just since we've been introduced to those two types of mamas on the show, every mama since has been a carbon copy of. And now we've got a different mama and a daddy in this instance. And they are funny. Like, I just really enjoy this um, family dynamic. You know, something else I want to bring up. I find it beautiful that we are able to incorporate someone of a different racial background, but escape a lot of the racial tension on this show. And it goes to show um, that oftentimes brown people can mesh together well. Um, I've never been a fan, like I was never a fan of Real Housewives of Atlanta when it was four uh, uh, or five black women and one white woman. I remember many years ago when Married to Medicine first started and me and Mariah Huck were in communication with each other. We were having a conversation one time and I was like, why do y'all have this white lady on here in the midst of all these black people? And she said to me, well, you have to have one. Um, you, you know, you have to have one on there basically to get the show sold, to get it on TV. You got to have one on there. And I just remember saying to her, uh, I don't, I don't know that I agree yet. And this was that during the time still 
where Housewives had Kim Zolciak and 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 we had not seen just the five straight black women formula yet. So I definitely am not wasn't knocking Mariah at the time in which she said it. Or maybe it was at the time right when Kim Zosia was about to make her exit. I can't remember. Either way, my concern when you had five black women and one white woman, woman do y'all remember that reunion of Real Housewives of Atlanta when Kim Zosiak said, no white woman in her right mind would sit on the stage with five African-American women? Like, what the fuck was that supposed to mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, it always becomes something racial. And what I like about Carrie's minor appearance and Anila's appearance on the show is that there hasn't been any racial tension thus far. And I hope it continues to stay that way with the different shades of brown. Um, when they first brought Anila on, I was like, you know, how is this going to work? This Indian girl thrust in the midst of all these black girls. But you know what? I've gotten used to Anila being there. Um, and, you know, you know, is she bringing drama? No, but you don't need everybody bringing drama. I actually like Anila being there. And I like that her family setup just brings something a little lighthearted and more lighthearted and more dynamic to the doggone show. So shouts out to the Indian girls and to the Bollywood girls. Or whatever for coming through. Um, heavenly them show up to Simone's them house for the dinner party. Now whoever the hell that caterer was. And Simone how she looked like she had it going on. And we need to get her information. Y'all drop down in the description box. And give us her information. Because she looked like she washed her hands and used gloves. When she cooked the food or whatever. It, it looked really nice. They had the steaks and everything. Uh... And Cecil pulls out that NDA. I thought it was funny. They was talking about Heavenly in the YouTube. Now, here's the thing. The dinner party went left, and it went left very quickly. I definitely think when Dr. Damon started talking, I definitely think that he was directing the lion's share of his commentary to his wife, but saying it in such a way where he was not singling her out and still, you know, kind of made it general. I hate that Contessa took it so personal and took it as if she was getting a lecture from Dr. Damon because she was still mad with Heavenly. I don't think that Damon was trying to lecture any of the women. I think he was speaking in general. I think because Contessa was still mad with Heavenly, she's like, you need to direct that to your wife. Um, you know, Contessa, this season, you have been overly hostile. Um, you have your part to do in it as well. Um, and I wish that Contessa would have been in a space where she could have just received what Dr. Damon was saying. Because in the grand scheme of life, what Contessa and Heavenly are going through is bullshit. You know, and I think Contessa was just so wrapped up in her hostility with Heavenly that she could not receive what Damon was trying to say. I don't think Damon was trying to lecture her come at her sideways or minimize any of what she was experiencing. But you have to admit, regardless of how it hurts or what part of your life it attacks, it's all some bullshit. Y'all around here grown as damn near 50, over 50 year old women arguing about some bullshit that don't have to be. You know what I'm saying? Now, the lion's share of it is Heavenly Falk. Run her damn mouth on that damn YouTube. It just is what it is. But, the, you know, the, the other part of it, too, is how y'all react to it. And that damn ambush, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, you know, getting off scotch-free for that ambush either, um, Dr. Contessa. Then they get outside to the car. Well, Dr. Damon starts on the inside saying, you know, I'm asking you to be quiet. And you keep talking. I find that to be disrespectful. Then they get out to the car. You know. And he 
quiets heavenly down and he, you know, was telling her, you know, you know, I think is this what it's like every time you and your friends get together and you know, I think you have a part in this. You know what I'm saying? He was just telling her flat out. And, you know, it feels like Damon is tired of this shit. You know, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, if Heavenly talks about it at home or if he has to hear about it in the streets or just from watching the show or just from being around. You know, as a man, as, listen, as a viewer, this shit has gotten cumbersome, tired and old. So I definitely know whether Heavenly discusses it at home or not, you still feel that energy radiating off your spouse. Your man is tired of it. And it's petty. I love how, what he was saying about men. How, you know, men tend not to be catty and chatty. We respect boundaries. And with the women, y'all don't have it. And then Contessa, here she go, well, I think I think like a man. And da, 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 da. You know, the shit just went left. And while Heavenly didn't need to tell her to shut the fuck up and let the man speak or shut the hell up and slap men just and let him speak, Contessa honestly needed to just shut the hell up. Um, because I think what sent the conversation left is when Contessa started interjecting versus just listening. Like, Dr. Damon is sweet. He don't bother nobody. And I don't think he deserved to be thrust in the middle of any type of confrontation. And I'm glad that he just decided, instead of sitting up here arguing with this woman or getting into it with Scott, I'm just going to go. Me, I'm, I'm just going to leave. And, and that's what he got up and did. Um... Jackie throws her party in Heavenly Calls crying and saying that she wasn't going to be able to attend because she had to sign the do not resuscitate papers that day, you know, which meant they were getting closer to the end. That's all understandable that she didn't come. Um, Anila brings her mother to Dr. Jackie's office to get an old shot. Now, let me tell you something. What would have set it off, I suggest, is if Anila's mother would have got an old shot. That would have been the icing on the dog on cake. But I find it a little perplexing that Anila's mom had enough control over her at, Toya said she's 45, at 40-something years old, to dictate what she could and could not do. Again, I'm not going to pass judgment, cultural awareness. I don't understand how other people do it in their culture. But my parents stopped dictating what I do with my body when I was around about 22 years old. So I just don't understand it. But I'm going to let it ride. Let it, let it ride. I'm going to let it ride. Nevertheless. <laughs> I was about to go somewhere, but I'm going to stop. But... <laughs> Y'all dr <laughs> drop that in the comments and let me know which one of them, which one of them y'all think will stink. <laughs> I'm so immature and childish. Um, you know, Lord have mercy. Being an OBGYN, it's got to be one hell of a job. I, I'll never forget, I was dating an OBGYN one time uh, many years ago. And he was telling me, that in his office, you know, that they use codes. He's like, you know, we've got a cold brown in room two, a cold yellow. And that would just mean for different, you know, issues that somebody had going on while their legs over, whether it was boo-boo or pee or 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 or, or uh, what else you call it, discharge or whatever the case may be. He was just telling me they had different little coded languages they would scream across the office to let you know. Um, but I imagine that Dr. Jackie keep some Lysol wipes or some Huggies or some Summer's Eve or at a minimum some soap and water and some toilet tissue in there for the women to freshen up if they didn't know what they was coming in there um, to get the old shot. I would be curious to know and if, if any OBGYNs or doctors are on the line drop down in the comments do they have an old shot for men? Like, can you spin the platelets and then stick it in the head of the penis and then give men extra sensation and extra oomph or whatever? Because uh, I think I'd be interested in that. I think if they offer something like that for men, you know, I'm a man. I like sex, love sex, dirty sex, every sex, like Jocelyn Hernandez said. Um, 
I'd be interested in getting one. Fellas, would y'all get one? I know all the gays will hurt it. They get one in their ass. You, let me tell you something, Dr. Jackie. If you really want to make some money, start selling, sp splitting them. Sp sp and you in Atlanta too, girl. And this Pride weekend, this weekend, child, you start spinning them platelets and sticking it in them sissies' ass. Baby, you you wouldn't even have to deliver no more, baby. Baby, you'll have a line wrapped around that damn corner called Fleet and Skeet, honey. They <laughs> dush out that bussy and put them platelets in that ass. Baby, you'll be able to build you two or three surgical centers. You'll have one on the south side, one on the north, one on the east, and one on the west, because that's the best. Yes, God, honey, them sisters in Atlanta have your ass sold up with so much damn money. You'll be able to retire next year. Do Jesus. Last but not least, we get into the thing, and Toya and Contessa get to talking. And Contessa gets to recanting what was going on at Simone's house or whatever because she heard it. Her and Heavenly got into a fight. And Quad interjects and lets them know, you know, part of the reason why Heavenly was such on edge was because her mother was dying. Or whatever. At least that's what they showed on the television show. And then everybody gets their old shot and go home. This episode of Married in Madison wasn't very eventful. It was, uh, yeah, kind of blah. Or whatever. Quad brings her friend Leilani with her. Um, we didn't get anything from her other than an introduction and a big smile. Or whatever the case may be. But, you know, that's the Madison Wives, y'all. I can't, you know, give y'all what ain't that. This was a kind of flat episode. But it looks like next week's episode is going to pick up with Eugene and Toya going to marital counseling. Because it looks as if the old shot ain't enough to keep Toya happy. And it don't look like Eugene happy either. Um, so hopefully we get to explore that and see what's going on. I hope that their marriage is okay. I'm, I'm so tired of seeing people's marriages tied up on this show. They don't need to call it medicine wives. They need to call it marriage wives um, or divorce wives or divorce court uh, at that matter. Anyway, that's all I got. Ain't got no more. I be, be sure to like and subscribe if you're new to my channel. I'll call y'all hoes later. Bye.